Hello everybody, today I'll show you how you can create this system that if your character gets hit or something like this enters into a ragdoll, then he can smoothly transition with an animation to being able to walk again. I'm enabling the ragdoll with the key right now, but tie this logic to some other event, for example, some other character hit you or something like this. And we'll be creating the recovering from the ragdoll. As you can see, if you fall at your front side, you will get an anim animation from the front. But if you fall backwards, you will get an anim animation that's getting up from your backside. So this was really important for me when creating this system. So hopefully you like how it came up. So let's start by setting up this system. I'll make the enabling of the rug doll just by hitting a key. Your game should have some logic to enable that, but let's start with making this map to a key like R, for example. I'll disconnect everything that I currently have connected. So we start from the beginning. Let's start with hitting the R key. So I have here the R keyboard event. So right click, type keyboard and find the R key here into the keyboard events. I already have it. We'll drag out of this and we'll call our custom event which will enter the ragdoll mode. This custom event is created by right clicking, start typing custom and choose this add custom event. Let's call this ragdoll begin. When we press this R key, we'll call this ragdoll begin event. And what this event will do is first, it will set up collisions for our mesh for the character. So let's set collision enabled, connect this to our event and choose the type here to QRA plus physics, collision enabled, QRA plus physics. This will enable all collisions for our mesh. Then let's do a simulate B wall for our mesh. So again, connect our mesh to this set all bodies B wall simulate physics. You need to give it a bone name here. So right click somewhere and make literal name. And this name should be the name of the bone that you want to have as a root for your simulation, which will be the pelvis bone for us. Let me go into our character skeleton here. So the pelvis is the root bone. One important thing for our skeleton is that into your physics asset, you need to have a body for the root bone. Let's go into the physics asset, which is this one. So open your physics asset. If you open the skeleton, which was this, you can go into the physics asset by clicking this button at the end. So this physics asset originally didn't have this element for the root body, which I have here. So select the root bone here. Add a shape. I added a sphere, make it very small by scaling it down. Then select the root 
constraints and then here select the pelvis this will create a constraint between your root and the pelvis of the body select this constraint down here into the graph and you should set up it like this this linear limits should be free for all of them and you need to have the shape for your root bone to have a physics type of kinematic and here the collision response should be disabled this is very important otherwise you get your ragdoll to behave a little bit funky with colliding the terrain so make sure you have these settings done and after this go into your blueprint and let's continue with the setup so here the bone name it should be the pelvis it's the first bone after the root bone so let's connect this bone name here then we should not be able to control our character while we are in ragdoll mode so let's drag out of here and set movement mode for the character movement component this will connect the character movement into this set movement mode and set the mode to none this will make it that you cannot control the character until we set the movement mode again to walking for example so let's try now going into the game then hit the r key i'm properly setting the movement mode to none now because i cannot control the character but the ragdoll is not enabled so let's exit and check if there's some problem ah yeah we didn't mark here the checkbox to simulate so we need to set the simulate physics to true in order to enable this ragdoll mode let's go now into the game let's hit the r key and as you can see i'm enabled the ragdoll mode and i cannot control the character anymore let's go out of the game and for now let's do it like this when i press the r key i'll go into the ragdoll mode with this ragdoll begin and with a flip flop note the first time i pressed i'll go into the ragdoll begin mode and the second time i'll go into the ragdoll end mode which is another custom event let's add a custom event ragdoll end and here let's connect the rack doll and so the first time i press it i'm going into the rack doll event and the second time i'm going into the rack doll end which will end our rack doll and what we do to end the rack doll is first we need to attach our mesh back to our capsule component so drag out of the mesh attach component to component the parent will be our capsule component and we'll have everything here to snap to target so we'll move the mesh to our capsule component then we need to set the location and rotation for our mesh let's drag out of the mesh set relative location and rotation so our relative location and rotation if we go to the viewport and select the character mesh they are set up as minus 90 into the z-axis for the location and 270 for the rotation so if we don't set them again they will be zero and the character will not look the same way like it should so minus 90 and 270 let's 
after this turn off the simulate all body physics for our mesh so control drag set simulate physics to off we'll stop simulating and then we'll set the movement mode to walking in order to be able to control our character again so let's compile and save this let's go inside the game now if i press the r key i enable this ragdoll mode my character falls and if i click the r key again i'm now back to the regular mode and i can control the character so so far so good let's continue with adding the animations how to add the animations first let's do a test with one of the animations so you should have two separate animations one of them is the character getting up from the back this is the one i have it's a maximal animation so you can down download it freely from there you need to convert it to works with your character skeleton i have the default unreal skeleton here there are lots of tutorials how to convert to your skeleton your character can have different skeletons so i'll not show you how you can do this but if you have an animation of getting up for your character you should create an animation montage by right clicking on the animation create an animation montage I have an animation for getting from the front as well. This one. But let's start with the getting from the back. First we'll always use this animation and then we'll create the logic how to determine if we are fallen uh, to the front side or to the back side. Let's first connect here. After we stop simulating the physics or actually be before that before stopping simulation let's control drag our mesh again let's get the anim instance so we are getting the animation instance for our character and let's play montage so montage play let's connect it here when we end the ragdoll event, we'll play the stand back. Okay, stand from the back. Let's compile and save this. One other thing for your montage. Here, if I go to the stand from the back montage, you can see I have the blend time for the blend in to a short period. This will quickly transition from the current position of the character mesh to the position from the animation. And then I have a slower blend in time when the character is up. The transition will happen over one second to the animation from the animation blueprint. So here I have 0.25 and here I have 1. Let's save this and let's try to see what happens now. So I play this montage and then I'm setting simulate physics and setting the movement mode. Let's go into the game and test this. If I click the R key, I am now into the ragdoll mode. If I click it again, I'm playing the animation of getting up from the back and I'm able to control the character. I have a problem now that I can control the character while he's doing the animation. So to prevent this inside your animation montage, create a notify. So let's stop this animation go here into the notify track 
of your animation montage, right click Add Notify, click on the new Notify button and give it a name of Standing. Then when you go into your animation blueprint for your character, let's go here. Here is the animation blueprint for my character. Here you will find uh, animation notify. Try typing anim notify and here you will have the anim notify standing. Then you need to cast your character to the type of pawn that you are controlling. For me it's this blueprint mountain bike rider and call a function. Currently I have a standing function created. Let's delete everything here. So when we are notifying into our blueprint the standing animation, I have this character set to this value. So get owning actor, cast to character, and then it's cast to this character variable. This is by default of the third person actor. So you should have this as well if you're using the third person actor. If not, create a variable which is of a type character. Then cast this owning actor into this character variable. And after this, use this character variable. So get character, then cast to your type of pawn that you have. For me, it's this mountain bike rider. And here into our mountain bike rider, let's create a new custom event and we'll call it character standing. So this event, let's call it here, drag from the type of your character and call the character standing custom event. So now your animation blueprint, when it gets to this standing notify, so also it's important to place it where you want the transition to be happening. So don't place it here when the character is not still up. Place it when your character is with the most similar position to your idle state. And when this happens, this animation notify event will trigger and it will trigger this custom character standing event into your character blueprint. And when this event is triggered, you want to disable the simulate physics and enable the movement mode to be walking again. Let's compile and save this now. And if we play the game now, if we go into ragdoll mode, if I click the R key again, Now, I cannot go back again. There's some problem. Let's try again. To be sure that we didn't miss something. So I click R. Ragdoll is enabled. I click R again. Nothing happens. The montage is not playing. Let's redo this. Play montage. Well, let's play from the animation instance. Montage play. And stand the back. Interesting. It's calling properly the character standing event. 
but not playing the animation. Okay, we need to set the simulate physics to not be true in order to play the animation. So let's first set our simulate physics to false here. And then let's play the montage. And after the montage ends, not ends, but when it comes to this standing animation notify will then enable the control of our character again. Let's go and play this. Let's hit the R key. Our character is in ragdoll mode. Let's hit the R key again. Now we have the animation properly playing. Okay. As you saw, our character is not smoothly transitioning into the animation and our animation is basically just standing from the back side. We don't have the front or back side check. When we play this montage, let's first move this here. Let's go back again to this setup with the montage playing like this. Let's add a timeline. This timeline will animate from, let's go inside, double click the timeline. Let's add a track. So for half a second, let's say, let's add a float track and add key. This key will be zero, zero. And the second key, let's add second key and 0.5. Let's have a value of one. So this is our track for half a second from zero to one. For this timeline, actually we will need to go from one to zero. So let's connect here to reverse from end and for each second or actually each, each frame, let's update the weight of our physics animation. So let's set all bodies below blend weight for the mesh. So let's set all bodies below physics blend weight for our mesh to this timeline value. So it will go from one to zero. So the blend weight, first it will show you directly the ragdoll and it will smoothly transition into our animation. And after we finish this animation, let's connect this finished node to the set simulate physics to off. So after we completely blend to our not simulated version, let's remove the simulation. I have an error here. I need a bone name. Let's copy here this pelvis bone name. And let's connect it here. Compile and save this. Now, if we go into our game, if we enter the ragdoll mode, if I click the R, now I have a transition. The problem is, let me go somewhere where the ragdoll will travel more. If I enable the ragdoll, the capsule component, which holds my camera and also to which we are returning then the body after we end the simulation. If I click R, you can see it's transitioning back to the position where we 
entered into the rug though. So if I click R, it's going back to this original position. So we need to update the position of our capsule component to go where our body is currently located. To do this, first let's, when we begin the ragdoll event, let's create a variable and let's call this variable in ragdoll. So I already have this variable created, but click on the variable button, create a variable called in ragdoll. It should be a boolean variable. I cannot create it right now because I already have this, but I'll use the one I have. Sorry, out drag it here. So this variable, when we enter the ragdoll mode, let's set it to true. When we enter the ragdoll, we have this value. And when we are into the ragdoll, let's connect our event tick. So on every frame, if we are into the ragdoll mode, so control drag this ragdoll, make a branch, connect this. If we are in ragdoll mode, we want to position our capsule component to the position of our mesh. So drag the capsule component, set world location and to set the location drag out our mesh let's get socket position location sorry the socket that we want is our pelvis so copy the pelvis name from the other graphs that we had we want the location of our pelvis and if we are in ragdoll we'll update the location to this location of the pelvis let's try this now now when i clicked the r key you can see that i am now properly repositioned where the body is if I click the R key again, there's a problem. I'm under the map. The problem here is that we are repositioning the body too low. So when we reposition our capsule component to the place that our pelvis is, after this here, our body, you can see that it needs to be 90 units below our pelvis. So let's first find the position on the ground where we want to set this body to. So let's move this a little bit to the right and let's wind trace by channel. This wind trace, it will start from our pelvis and it will end 90 units below our pelvis because this is the height that we want to have for our character mesh. Let's do a multiply node. So the vector will be minus one. And here below, let's change to float and we'll do 90 units. This vector is 90 units downwards. We'll add this vector to the position of our pelvis and this will be the end of our trace. So we'll trace from the pelvis down and where we hit the floor, so this out hit, let's break this We'll break this result, this walking hit, band here, and let's find the location of the hit. 
and we'll add this with a value of 90 because this is the original location for our character mesh and we'll set it like this so we'll set the capsule component to be 90 units over the location where our character is currently placed for now if our character is fallen on the ground try it our character is on the ground let's click the R key and now we have some weird result let's try now to find the error so if we are in ragdoll actually we need when we start exiting the ragdoll so on the ragdoll end event we need to set this in ragdoll variable to false in order to stop repositioning our capsule let's compile and save this let's try now let's hit the R key hit the R key again so every time my capsule it's being repositioned very very far away let's check what the problem We are setting up the ragdoll here and if we are with the ragdoll enabled then we are white wine tracing and setting to the location of our hit so probably before Wine tracing here. We need to check if we are properly finding something. If not, we need to set the world location to where our pelvis is. Let's compile and save this. And let's try now now it's fixed before we were having problem because our pelvis doesn't have doesn't hit the the wine trace doesn't hit the floor and we try to reposition the capsule so we get this error where we are positioned at the zero coordinates probably so now that we have everything connected we don't have this problem anymore so now the problem is that we always have this animation standing from the back and also our character is rotating instead of just playing the animation directly from the proper position so to fix the position actually we'll do that later because it's different for the animations that we have for the front and for the back to set up the determining is our character facing up or down before playing the montage we need to determine which montage to play here so here let's disconnect this and let's do a wine trace this wine trace let's collapse this to a function 
and let's call this function check ragdoll facing for for example let's go inside this function we will be again tracing from the pelvis location you can go back and copy this get socket location with the pelvis name go inside the function here so we will again start a line trace from the pelvis location actually let's let's not do a line trace we don't need a line trace let's get a socket rotation instead of location sorry let me go back before i deleted this so let's get socket rotation let's have the socket to pelvis let's get the right vector so this right vector will compare with the direction of the world pointing up so the direction of the world pointing up is 0, 0, 001 the z value of 1 let's do a dot product and put a 1 for the z value of the vector that we are comparing let's do a branch node and let's connect this to a greater than and use greater than zero so if this value is ne negative this means that our character pelvis is pointing to the ground and if it's positive it means it's pointing to the sky so if negative if positive sorry this over zero this means that our pelvis is pointed to the sky so we need to play the back animation we need to create another variable i already have it created but for you it's again a boolean variable so click the variable button call it is ragdoll is fallback for example i have name it like this so if we are with the dot product of over zero this means that our character is laying on his back and if not it means that it's laying on his face so this should be false this connection true to the top one and false to the bottom one it's just we can directly connect this value but whatever feels better to you if you want to have a branch if not you can just have a set node like this and connect it directly here so this function is determining if our character is facing up or down in my example before i have some other calculations here which they will determine if your speed is close to zero so if you are still falling on some stairs for example it will not trigger the animation but i can show you this later for now let's continue with the setup like this so you are setting up this is fallback variable and back into the event graph where we play this montage here let's connect this function to the play montage and the montage now will be determined by this variable here let's drag out of this montage let's do a select let's connect this is fallback to the condition here and if it's fallback we need to play the the get the stand back animation and if not 
the stent front animation. So if it's fallen backwards, play the stent back. If not, actually they are opposite, so false is the top one. Stent front and now stent back here. So if this variable is true, we'll play the stent from the back and if it's false, we'll play the stent from the front. Let's test now. We are in the game. Let's hit the R key. We are now falling sideways, so it, uh, it's hard to tell if it's the right animation. Okay, now it's falling to the back. Let's click R. It's getting up from the back. Now again from the back. Make sure that we are falling fully to the front. Okay, now we should get the front animation. Yeah, so it seems to be working fine. Okay, we are getting the front animation properly and the back animation properly. Just to make sure that we are handling everything properly. Let's have some checks here. We want to have the ragdoll end event executing only if our character is in ragdoll mode. So do a branch node here. We want to go inside a ragdoll only if we are not already into a ragdoll mode. So drag out of this in ragdoll. Let's connect the false. If we are not in the ragdoll, we can begin going into a ragdoll mode. If only if we are already in ragdoll mode, we can begin ending the ragdoll mode. And for the event tick, we are also checking if we are in ragdoll, we are moving our capsule to the proper place. And before playing the montage here, after we check the ragdoll, we need also to set the capsule component rotation. Let's set the world rotation. And this rotation will be equal to the socket rotation of our pelvis. So let's copy this from our function, the socket rotation of our ragdoll. Split this. We'll add a rotation, rotation value for the Z axis. We'll only use the Z axis here as well. And what we'll add is, let's do a select float and we'll again connect this is fall back. If it's fall to the back, we'll use 180 degrees. If not, we'll use zero because we had the animation properly playing if we are falling to the front, but it was rotating the character if it was on his back. So now this should fix this issue. Now if we are falling to the front, we are properly entering the animation. If we fall to the back, if I click R, again no rotation, everything is fine. What I want to change now is that currently I'm using this flip-flop to enter into the ragdoll end event. I don't want that. I want my character to be able to stand up on his own. So when I press the R, if I'm not in the ragdoll mode, so let's do a branch and if I'm not in the ragdoll, so let's connect in ragdoll and the false, 
only if I'm not already into a ragdoll mode, I will enter the ragdoll mode. And here, into my check ragdoll facing for function, I will check when I enter the ragdoll. I'll set set timer by function name and this is the function that I want to call check ragdoll facing for. So let's copy the name of the function. Let's enter it here. Let's promote this to a variable. This new variable should be called timer ragdoll, for example. So I'm setting this timer ragdoll, and every let's say half second, I will be checking the if the ragdoll is facing the four. And if I go inside the function. I will not only check if it's facing the floor, I'll first check if it's moving still too fast. So if, let's get our mesh, let's get component velocity, of our mesh. I'm sorry, let's get physics linear velocity. When we get this linear velocity, we will use the ball name again, pelvis. We'll check if this linear velocity is close to zero. Let's drag out of this return variable and check if the vector is nearly zero. The tolerance here, I would say, would be five. Let's do a branch. If it is nearly zero, this means we are phone back and our character stopped moving. We are not rolling still on the ground. We already stopped. So then we will check if we are facing the front or the back. And after this, we will call the event for the ragdoll end. Let's go back here and call ragdoll end. Instead of calling this ragdoll end when we press the R key, we no longer can manually trigger it. We need our character to stop moving in order to get up alone. So I'll go back here now. I'll click the R key. I'm entering the ragdoll. And when our character stops moving, okay, he's not getting up. I cannot manually put it up. So let's check. What's the problem? Probably this is a too low of a tolerance, but let's try. Let's print this vector. So every half second, we'll check this vector. Okay, I see the problem now. We don't check continuously this vector, we just check it once. So let's go back to the event graph. And here, when we call this function by this timer, you should have this whooping box enabled. So you will not call it just once, you will call it continuously. And it will check the length of our vector. Let's go back to the function vector is nearly zero. Let's try now. 
let's hit R and now the problem is that we are continuing to check this so let's remove this print string now let's go back to the event graph so when we set this timer we are saving it here into this variable so inside the function here before calling this ragdoll end let's control drag this timer and let's clear and invalidate this timer so we stop checking the position and facing of our character and this way our character should be now able to stand up on its own when he falls when he stops rolling he will go up and you can continue control him let's try to roll now here on the stairs to see that he will get up only after he stops moving let's try here when he stops he is immediately standing up on its own and he is choosing the front or back position properly so I hope you like this system you should delete the debug print strings that we added but otherwise this should be fine for your characters in your game for example if you get hit by some other character or something like this you should call this enter ragdoll event and everything else it will sort out by itself when your character stops moving on the ground it will check where the position is and it will play the animation this should be the setup for your character and if you have some questions or some other proposal for tutorial please write back in the comments like and subscribe if you like this tutorial and you can consider joining the channel if you want to support me so i can continue making tutorials and guys i'll see you in the next tutorial bye